Welcome back guys to another Clash Royale video and today we're going to be taking a look at this P.E.K.K.A. double print strategy because it has received several buffs in the past couple of updates. Now the deck I'm using today is a P.E.K.K.A. double print strategy without any legendaries in it um, because I know a lot of you guys don't have the Ice Wizard or the Princess but I will say in my opinion this deck is a lot stronger with both the Ice Wizard and the Princess in it just because both of those cards offer some pretty good uh, strategic value to a battle and they also have very low elixir cost so it makes it easier to use high elixir cost cards like these so if you guys had the ice wizard and the princess i would say you can probably get rid of the poison spell as well as the elixir pump because the princess offers the area damage that the poison spell does and with both of those cards costing low elixir you don't really need the pump in your deck in my opinion but let's go ahead and take a look at some replays here so here we are guys, facing off against Steven in the Frozen Peak Arena. This is on my mini account of course. Now the reason I'm playing on my mini account here instead of my main account is my main account still has level 2 princes and he's facing level 10s and 11s and those card levels just won't do. So on this account here, I'm only facing level 8s and level 9s, mostly level 9s, so I'm still at a disadvantage here, but definitely not as big of a disadvantage as facing level 10s and level 11s. Now the main strategy with this deck is for the first 2 minute or so, try and cycle through your cards and get as many pumps as you can and uh, just try and play defensively. Now the one thing I will say about the P.E.K.K.A. double print strategy and the one reason why you haven't seen a huge increase of this strategy being used ever since the update is because these cycle decks are so strong right now and it's really hard to set up a push with one of these high electric cost decks because your opponents just keep cycling through their cards and keep doing little mini pushes for like 7 or 8 elixir and doing damage to your tower and you're just stuck defending all those pushes and you don't have the time or the elixir to set up one strong push with your deck but that being said those cycle strategies rely on getting chip damage over time to take out your tower whereas a P.E.K.K.A. double print strategy like this only really needs one real strong push to take out a tower. So you have to keep that in mind and try and save your elixir and your P.E.K.K.A. push for later on in the game when you have the elixir to set up a strong push. Now so far in this battle, I have the damage lead. His tower on the left hand side is all the way down to 1700 health, but he's also using a Lava Hound Raid strategy, which is a really strong strategy. In fact, I did a video on it a couple days ago. If you guys have a Lava Hound and you want to check it out, I'll put a link in the description below, but you'll see how it works in just a couple seconds here. So the Lava Hound coming in here. Now the only real strong air defense I have in this deck is Musketeer, the Zaspel, and the Poison Spell. So right here, Double Prince is going down to counter the P.E.K.K.A. Zaspel going down to stun the minions, then the poison spell going down here to finish those minions off. Now unfortunately the poison spell is a little bit early because of course the Lava Hound himself doesn't do too much damage, it's the Lava Pups that you have to worry about. So as you can see right here, Lava Hound about to explode, down goes the Rage Ball and take a look at how much damage it does to my tower with this one Lava Hound explosion and the Rage Ball, bringing it all the way down to 900 health guys. So like I said, the Lava Hound Rage Ball definitely a strong strategy in this game. So, so far in the battle, there's 40 seconds left. He has a strong damage lead. My tower all the way down to 600 health. His tower is still sitting at 1200 health, but I'm gonna start setting up some pushes with my P.E.K.K.A. as well as the Princess. Then I'm gonna use that Poison Spell to try and take out any cheap units that he tries to use for distraction. So right here, P.E.K.K.A. going in with that Prince. Musketeer in behind for support. Now, unfortunately, my P.E.K.K.A. is distracted by the Tesla, but he does take it out in one hit and then go on to finish off the mini P.E.K.K.A. And I'm gonna try and keep the pressure on here, but unfortunately, his tower decides to target my Musketeer instead of targeting the Dark Prince that was in front of her. So I had to give up on that push and start setting up a new one. So right here, he's coming with another Lava Hound. I'm gonna go in here with a P.E.K.K.A., drop the Poison Spell to take out all the minions, and then use my Musketeer to hopefully kill that Lava Hound. And now, knowing what his strategy is with the Rage Spell, I'm gonna sit on my Zap Spell and wait for that Lava Hound to explode, and then use my Zap Spell to kill all those Lava Pups and prevent any damage onto my tower, and pretty much allow him to waste the three Elixir on that Rage Spell. So right here, Double Prince is going in and I counter push with the Musketeer for support. I'm gonna go ahead and use the Poison Spell to slow down that Mini P.E.K.K.A. And fortunately, the Dark Prince does make it to the tower and will give me the one crown victory. Let's go ahead to the next replay here. So here we are guys, facing off against Thumpkin, who is a level 9 here. And one thing I will say about my cards in this deck 
is having only level 2 epics against level 9 opponents definitely does suck. In fact, you're going to see him drop down a level 4 witch right here. I give him a wow, good game, because this came after a full morning of constantly facing people that had much higher level cards, and I definitely had a hard time making these level 2 epics work. So if you guys, like I said earlier, have higher level epics, you should have a lot easier of a time making them work. Because like I said before, level 2 epics are balanced against level 7 commons, so facing against people that have level 9 commons, or even level 10 commons, definitely is a hard time making those low level cards work. Now, fortunately, we defended that push pretty well. He didn't do any damage to our tower. We are equal on Elixir, but I do have a pretty much full health pump down on the bottom right corner. So I definitely came out ahead in that exchange right there. Now, right here, we're going to drop down a Prince and just try and cycle towards my pump and get a second pump down. Not going to go ahead and support that uh, Prince with anything. Just wait for him to counter it and see what kind of cards he has in his deck. He's setting up a giant Witch Push right here. So I'm going to go ahead and use my cannon in the middle of my base to distract that giant. And then use the Poison Spell on all those troops to hopefully kill the Witch's Skeletons. So hopefully they won't distract my units too much. Now Musketeer going down here to take out the Knight. Now take a look at this. His giant is still alive. Level 7 giant. I want to drop down my level 2 Prince in the middle there. And allow him to get one charge attack on. On that, uh, on that giant, sorry. And the giant was only able to bring my tower down to 1700 health. Now right here, I'm going to go ahead and use the Zaz spell to kill the skeleton army. And hopefully my prince can make it to the tower. In fact, he drops down a musketeer to distract the prince, which is a big mistake. Because my prince just took, him out, or took her out pretty quickly. And then went on to damage to the tower. And take a look at this musketeer bringing that tower all the way down to 600 health. And this tower was at pretty much full health when that push began. So definitely a huge counter push right there. So now we are hitting the double elixir period. I want to start setting up some pushes with my P.E.K.K.A here. P.E.K.K.A going down in the back. Dark Prince is going down from the side. Hopefully that splash damage can take out all those skeletons. And right here, I'm going to go ahead and drop down my Musketeer for some range support. Then just keep dropping down some cards. I want to take out all of his troops and keep building on my push. So I have a really strong counter push right here. Now down goes the poison spell. But unfortunately, half of his skeleton army doesn't get hit by the poison spell. So as you can see right there, the P.E.K.K.A gets distracted pretty much. And then dies before he even makes it to the tower. But right here, Dark Prince going in there. Unfortunately, at the very last second, he drops down a Knight to distract my Dark Prince. But take a look at this. I have two Musketeers tears down fortunately one of them was able to target the tower and give me the one crown lead and all i need to do here with 18 seconds left is defend and i will get the one crown victory so down goes the poison spell to take out all those skeletons and also slow down the witch and the bomber in the back pekka doing some damage to that giant the giant is able to bring my tower all the way down to 300 health so definitely a very close battle here against a higher level opponent but i do manage to get the one crown victory let's go ahead to the next replay here so here we are guys with the final replay facing off against Heartsman here. Now unfortunately no live battles today just because the iPad that I use for this mini account has been giving me some problems lately and I have to get them fixed before I can do some more live battles with it. Now my opponent here is using a minor cycle deck which like I said earlier is a really strong counter to the P.E.K.K.A double print strategy just because it's hard to save up the amount of Elixir to set up a strong push when you're constantly defending these cheap cycle attacks. Now I had my suspicions at this early point in the battle that my opponent was using a minor cycle deck just the fact that he placed on the three Elixir minions and they back behind his tower and he also placed on the goblins in there just kind of raised some suspicions I had that he might be using a minor cycle deck. So I was able to predict it and drop down my prince to counter his miner before he did any damage to my tower. Now unfortunately there the Valkyrie was able to take out both my Dark Prince as well as the Musketeer and I will say guys in my personal opinion I think the Valkyrie is a better choice versus the Dark Prince so I wouldn't be surprised if you see some people using a P.E.K.K.A Prince Valkyrie strategy just because I think the Valkyrie um, has more value to offer to a battle. She has a 360 degree attack. She seems like she has more health, and it's also easier to level up those rares than it is to level up those epics. Now right there, I was able to predict the minor placement perfectly, and as a result, he didn't do any damage to my tower. And this comes from experience, because I use a minor cycle deck on my main account, so I'm able to recognize where he's using his minor, and how he's setting up attacks. And against the minor cycle decks, guys, a strong counter is to try and expect what your opponent is going to do. Because a lot of minor cycle decks get into the same repetition of dropping down some minions, and then going into minor and then they defend and then they drop down more minions and go in with minor once again and you have to get them off their game and off their cycle and kind of screw up their card rotation now right here unfortunately his minor does lock onto my tower 
because my prince did go down a second too late to distract the miner, and as a result, my tower is all the way down to 1700 health. But not too bad overall, because like I said before, all you really need with the Pekka double prince strategy is one strong push to take out a tower. Now right here, prince going back on a counter push, unfortunately he wasn't able to do any damage to the tower. So at this point in the battle, there's 50 seconds left, his tower is still at full health, my tower sitting at 1700 health, but like I said, all you need is one strong push to make it happen. Now right here, Poison Spell going down to damage those minions, and all you really want to do is take out his support cards for the Miner push, because the Miner doesn't do the bulk of the damage most of the time, normally it's the minions or the goblins they send in with it, so you have to take out those cards first and then focus on the Miner. So right here I have a pretty strong uh, double prince push going back on a counter push. Unfortunately his Valkyrie is able to take out my dark prince but the poison spell going down to take out those fire spirits as well as the minions and right here the prince almost makes it to the tower but the goblins do take him out. Now Musketeer going in there getting one shot off bringing that tower down to 1900 health and right here I recognize that he's setting up another minor push. So as you can see right there I dropped down the Musketeer as well as the dark prince behind my tower because I was expecting a miner to appear in that location. Now he drops on the fireball here, kind of catching me off guard and bringing my tower down to 1100 health. But I'm gonna start setting up some pretty strong pushes here with my P.E.K.K.A. So this is the first time I think in this battle so far that I placed the P.E.K.K.A. And that's okay because like I said, you just need one strong push to make it happen. So right here, P.E.K.K.A. going up front there. Prince falling behind with a Musketeer. I'm gonna try and keep dropping troops behind my tower just in case he just has to drop in a miner. But as you can see right here, he's focusing desperately on trying to defend. Cannon going down, Fire Spirit's going down. Now take a look at this, I have a second Prince going in there. Dark Prince and Prince making it to the tower. Unfortunately, the P.E.K.K.A. is distracted by the Goblins, but I do get the one crown victory. But anyways guys, that's gonna do it for today's video. I really hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in the next video. Thank you.